loading up the screen for <clears throat> our next session. Excuse me. All right, almost there. Okay. Now I'm in. I can see. Let's uh, quickly recap. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you spent uh, last session uh, politicking and maneuvering around these elvish nobles who seem to were trying to set you up to look like some sort of, you know, violent ruffians um, threatening to uh, um, destabilize his kingdom. Um, but through your clever tactics, through uh, Mary's uh, casting of Detect Thoughts, you were able to uh, get out of uh, Reyna, uh, Crassolin, one of the elf nobles, that, yeah, she was involved with the uh, plot that uh, wound up poisoning the father of King um, uh, Siren here. Um, now, but there was still some issues going on with the other nobles not liking you and still wanting you know you, you uh, to you know answer for you know that that previous attack. <clears throat> but Siren um, secretly and subtle and tr hopefully subtly um, let you get out um, and and he told you about the uh, the diplomat who was also in, kind of involved with this, and he wants to know more from that diplomat who made who fled a couple days ago and is making his way out to here this gnomish kingdom of Knackle Hill. And he's asked you to go try to get go, go to get him and see if we can uh, what well, we can determine what he knows about all this. Now uh, Castile, um, he, uh, he messaged me earlier, he, he's not going to be able to make it, so what he's going to do is he's going to remain behind and hang out with that elf noble friend that he's acquired, and they're going to kind of do their own investigating while, while you guys are gone. So, Sounds good. Yep. Now, we're going to be making our way um, across this region from Ilnesdale to Knackle Hill. And we're talking about, you know, 300 or so miles, give or take. And we're talking about a week of travel. Now, we're going to assume, um, since you've been, um, have, you've had maybe, I think we're now like up to three, two, three months of time in this kingdom, that you've, you've prepared yourself for cold weather. Because in this kingdom, it is cold, but you're still in a settlement. There are fires, there are sources of warmth, but once you get outside and out into the open, it, it gets really cold. Um, you've been you've been also warned about uh, you know just sudden bursts of icy cold wind where all you can do is just really hunker down and, and hope to survive. Um, so fierce and so uh, violent that you can't really move through it. Um, sometimes that happens, and actually that's that's on the encounter table. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, but um, yeah. So show me how. Like, well, first describe describe the uh, the the travel, um, how you move in. Uh, you, are we moving stealthily? Are we moving normally? Keeping in mind, stealthy movement is like at half speed. Uh, are we going really to move really cautiously? Yeah, I don't really know that I see the need for it. I don't think we need to move slow and stealthily, but we can move cautiously. Like, I can keep my armor off, and I think that'd be good enough as a disguise. Not a lot of people know my face, besides you guys. Uh... So we could try that approach. Okay. Now you are loaded up with lots of fur, lots of kindle, lots of firewood, because um, yeah, this is going to be uh, a somewhat difficult of a journey. Now <clears throat> I'm not going to roll because uh, we're estimating about a week's travel time, and I'm not going to roll seven encounters for the day, seven encounters for the night. I'm just going to kind of trim that down to three for each, and and kind of pace pace where you are in relation to what roll that is if you get an encounter. So we're making our way east to Nako here. Here, so let's go. We're gonna go day roll one. Okay. Yep. You're making it through. Um, kind of making your way through uh, these woods. Eventually, kind of making it out to this clearing, um, to this open air, this open tundra area. Um, so let's go night roll one. Okay, set your fires. Yep, you're making uh, nothing happens. It's cold as hell. It, 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 well, I guess that don't make sense, but it's very cold. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, you're prepared. You got your gear. You got the you got the fire making material, so you're good. All right, so let's go. Let's go day roll two. Okay, 
So by now, you're kind of making your way to this point, kind of passing this little section of forested forested area. It's nothing, nothing, nothing bothers you. Oh, what happened? I lost connection. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. It, it's, it's back. Maybe just a temporary thing. All right, so now we're doing <laughs> night roll two. All right, and yeah, nothing can, seems to continue bothering. Making your way through still. Then we'll do day roll three. Yep, okay. Now you're kind of getting closer to these foothills. You're starting to see the land turn more hilly. It's still cold, it still snows a lot. And then we're going to have our final night roll for three. Night roll three. Okay. Make it in about a week to this gnomish kingdom named Knackle Hill. Now give me one second. Let me get some stuff up here on that. <clears throat> uh, where is it at? So our goal is to investigate this diplomat, correct? Yes. Try to... To, to try to either apprehend or question or interview and find out what this diplomat means. And the king was like kind of black. He says, hey, you know, you're outside my kingdom. You do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay. okay. I'm make sure I'm on the right page here. Yep, yep. All right, so give me one second here. No more goals. Easier. Yeah. Okay, so when you arrive at this city, um, you uh, will say you arrive, uh, you know, during the day, and uh, you can tell that the outside of the city is kind of built and nestled into uh, the, the mountains, um, like like a gnome city would be, and uh, the gates have uh, gnome guards. Um, there are gnome guards walking along the ramparts around the gates, and uh, they're they're currently open. Um, you see people coming in with wagons. You see wagons going out. A lot of them are carrying, you know, probably gems and stuff. So you see that they have armed guards as well as they're making their way out of the mountains. And, um, yeah, you, you make your way in, and one of the gnomish guards kind of put, you know, approaches you and puts his hand up. He says, where are you from? From the south, in this film. All the people are on the name. I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill. Gallanton? Illness. Gallanton, yeah. thank you. No, no, no. In a still. Okay. Yeah, here, 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 I move him. There you go. <laughs> I said south. I'm so sorry. That's I meant okay. west. So, uh, all right, what do you want? I'm traveling. Uh, there's no particular reason we're coming here. <laughs> Heading to the north and I'd like uh, at least to relax. So to uh, recuperate. So like a holiday? More or less, yes. How long are you staying? Eh, no more than a week. A week. Yes, sir. You got coin? We don't. We don't want. Yeah. We don't want beggars and and riffraff. I assure you, we're going to be no liability to the city. We do have coin. All right. What are your What are your names? I'm August. Hello. You see him like scribbling something down some parchment. August. Big metal. Okay. I'm not wearing my armor right now. Oh, okay. All right, never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as as soon as uh, I saw that they were gnomes, like as soon as we got close enough to see what they were, what they were gnomes, I kind of turned her to the side, and I disguised self so I look like a gnome. Okay. And I go, my name is uh, uh, Whistle. Whistle, where are you from, Whistle? I don't see. You. I've never seen you before. <laughs> Gallanton. Oh, Gallanton. Okay. All right. And uh, points to. Uh, uh, the big owl. I'm Owlin. Owlin. Okay, that's a clever name. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. That's a. It's a ten gold piece for each of you. Oh, not or for a total uh, for entry into the city. Uh, you can go ahead and pay here, and then uh, you are uh, free to roam for a week. Damn. All right then. It is what it is. 
There you go. All right, so you hand him over some gold and deduct it from your sheet? I hand him my 10-piece. All right. Is it 10-piece collectively or 10-piece each? No, collective, total. Oh, I, I, I pay it. Okay. He, he inspects, he, like, he, he says, hold on, and he takes his time to inspect each and every single coin. And then uh, after about a after about a minute or so, he puts him back in his bag. He says, "All right, welcome to Knuckle Hill." Thank you. He just waves you in. <clears throat> now, as you make your way in into the city, um, there's 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 still a good portion of it that's like outside of the mountain, and you see a lot of shops set up. You see a lot of tents set up, wagons moving about, uh, gnomes mostly gnomes moving about, but some other uh, uh, traders of other races, um, merchants and traders also in the area. So, describe how you want to begin your search. What you what you want to do? finding this diplomat so is there any high-end restaurants or kind of people where place where people collect of that caliber of royalty but public still have a limited access to first, we might want to try and find a base of operations try and find an inn oh yeah that too <laughs> that'd be nice okay i'm just trying to get down a straight fast tax can, here can we ask can Pardon we ask me. the guard if he has any uh, recommendations as to a good inn to stay at? He says, well, most of the inns for the big people are outside the, outside the mountain. And he kind of points over, you know, a few, uh, and, 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 and you see. And he says, but, you know, the better inns for, the better inns for us are, are, in, are inside the mountain. And he, and, he, and he names off a few. <laughs> Art. Tall folk able to go inside the mountain, or is it mostly a more appropriately sized area? Uh, the, they can get in. There might be some areas where they're going to be cramped up some. But hey, if they're okay with that, then we're okay with that. I'll manage. <laughs> I don't know about that one, though. We just figure most of them are, are uncomfortable, confined like that, and prefer to be out in the open, so we built some ends out here for them. Mm hmm. Now, are those inns within the walls? They're like uh, of, within city limits. That's my. Is that uh, something that's just kind of common knowledge? Uh -huh. I don't yeah. know how to word it properly. Okay, cool. Okay, so do we want to find an inn inside the mountains or outside? Uh, um, outside. Uh. Hmm. What's your opinion, Mary? I'm uh, very indifferent. And I don't know what, what the benefits or the negatives would be. Well, our... Okay, so first of all, we're doing this talking in telepathy so that nobody can overhear us. That's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so, if we have a reason to stay at an inn nearer that like more higher ranking people would be at uh even if you were sort of uncomfortable about it we might want to do that because i could like we could sit in a tavern and just kind of talk about stuff and uh, i can use detect thoughts to see if there's any like surface thoughts that we could be interested in okay. so you're voting for inside the mountain yeah I, right, so. I agree. I, I, you, you have sound logic. And uh, I don't speak for Alan, but I'm sure you'd be all right with it. What's your What's your opinion on the inside or outside mountain tavern situation, Alan? Uh, I can really do either one. That's good. Let's do inside the mountain, then. All right, cool. Now, give me uh, one second here. I need to look for something, so I'm going to briefly pause recording. Give me one second. All righty. Okay, all right, we're back. Okay. Now, you're uh, you're able to make your way inside, um, inside to the into, into the mountain, 
and uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a bustle of activity. You can hear work, you can hear hammers and clinking. Um, not really like the 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 mining, uh, like it's smithing, but more like gem cutting, like light taps, not heavy clangs, but lots of light taps. Um, there are some hev heavier clangs, you know, further into the mountain where they're trying to you know get the gems out of the uh, earth. But uh, out here, this is more of the uh, the market area, the production area. You know, they get these raw gems, and you see lots of gnomes and their little chisels. You know, making you know trying to trying to make them you know, pretty and valuable. And um, and yeah, you're able to find one of the inns that the uh, that the guard um, guard recommends and. Uh, yeah, you're able to you're able to establish a room. You know, no, you know, no one really questions because there's there's other uh, there's other uh, races in this in this part of the city. So no one's really like raising any eyebrows or questions. You're just you know another uh, group of big people. You know, except for you, Mary. Um, you know, who are who are coming. You know, trying to find some you know, fortune probably. So you got set up, um, and we'll say let's see. Just gonna check out some expenses real quick. Food, drink, lodging, and stay. So these, yeah, and uh, and these are the nicer ones they pointed you out to. So we're gonna say that this is going to be, and this will include your food and drink, um, a gold per day for each of you. You can find lesser quality ones if you'd like, but this one's pretty nice. No, we need that swanky shit. <laughs> yeah, it's only a gold <laughs> to afford nice stuff. <laughs> okay, so you got your room set up, you've had a meal, you're together. What's the plan? All right. So what specifically is our mission here? Just find out more about the de the, the deception and move go back, or we here to murder some folks. Well, the king has asked you to uh, to find this uh, this this foreign diplomat who was who who was also meeting and working and seemed really close to Reyna. Now, soon after Reyna's uh, um, arrest. Um, or soon before Reyna's arrest, I should say, um, he left. He left the city, making his way here, so the king wants to know what else he knows. I was accidentally muted. Oops. Yeah, but is is our end game going to be we try and find this guy and, and have Alan fly him up to a nice high spot and go for a quick way down, or...? Like, um, get the info and get out of Dodge. We can get the info and get out of Dodge. How we get the info is totally up to our discretion, honestly. You know, we're going to have to suffer the consequences, but we're not that dumb. We're a little dumb, though. Um, no offense. But, yeah. Watch out, Sophie. But we could totally just have Alan pick a guy up and carry him. Well, we're in a mountain, though, so... That's going to be hard. Yeah, that, that is much ceiling space up here. Yeah. We can work with what we've got. We'll so, how do you how do you find a diplomat? So we find the seat of power, and he's probably going to be somewhere around there, right? Maybe. I believe so. So it sounds to me like we need to make friends with some nobles. God, I wish Castile was here. Castile's good at that. August, you can be friendly. I can be friendly. I'm just not good at it. I don't like to. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to. I don't want to set people on fire. <laughs> this is a chance for you to get outside your comfort zone. I don't want to leave my room. <laughs> it's a growing experience. At the end, you'll thank me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're right. You're right. Okay. Okay. So I vote that we go down and spread some Christmas cheer 
until we get a reputation as some people who know how to have a good time, and the nobles will come to us. A what? That's a pretty good idea. I'm not opposed to it. And, uh... We can all use some R&R. Absolutely. And my eyes twinkle. <laughs> have you, you tried have, bourbon? No, if you haven't already, you, you can long rest it if you need to. Um, all right. I, Sorry, like I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean to cut you all off. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm rested. So. Take the long rest. Rest. Okay. That's been hit. So describe for me, then, what this spreading of cheer looks like. You got this, Mary. So first, I'm going to cast uh, uh, Enhance Ability Santa's Splendor on myself, um, where I will get uh, advantage on charisma checks. Mm, that helps. As soon as I find the spell in my spellbook. Anyway, while I'm looking, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, I go downstairs um, and I'm kind of uh, asking the bartender uh, where the cool kids hang out, where where all the fun people hang out, looking for for a good time, looking for a party, uh, and I, I tip the bartender heavily, um, and after he gives me a, a kind of a like Miami nightclub vibe place. Um, we go there uh, and I start picking prosperous looking people and walking up to them and just start buying shots and being excessively friendly. Not like flirty friendly, but, you know, bon vivant, life of the party, um, doing, you know, Every, buying people rounds and, and uh, just trying to spread some good cheer and I'm pretty sure that the uh, useless children of nobles will start uh, coming over uh, looking to uh, uh, have useless a great night nobles <laughs> <laughs> god we've, just, always... we've seen too many of those we've seen too many of those <laughs> yeah, they're always hanging around and they always know what's going down because they know whose way they need to stay out of yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, oh, that's good. Now is and, uh, you're too good at this. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, if if I need to, I'm occasionally casting uh, detect thoughts before I go in, not for like deep level thoughts, but just surface level of okay, this is the mover and shaker that I need to specifically go for. Okay. So, are, are, you, are, you, are you targeting this effort towards a, a, a specific race that you see? or Because there's more gnomes than anyone, but uh, there are other races in the area. What was the race of the diplomat? Do we know? Um, I think elf. it was an elf. Elf. Half elf. Around that range. Yes. But yeah. he was specifically a diplomat of this city, and this is mostly a gnomish city. No, no, no. He was a he's a diplomat. I'll uh, I'll ping over here to the east to this kingdom. Oh, okay, okay. Um, then I think I'm targeting the uh, non gnomish people. Okay. More like visitors, people who come in and are leaving. Okay. Yeah, and I'm kind of playing on the uh, slightly out of place vibe that they feel. Okay. So give me. I'll let you choose. You can do persuasion. You can do performance, deception. If that's how you're going with it. Um, now I'll say more to persuasion or performance, and it's at advantage, and. Uh, and also give yourself a uh, plus one d4 on that. It's 
So we got an 18. Okay. So it's not bad. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, that's 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 decent. Yeah, I mean, you know, what you're trying to do isn't that difficult. So an 18 is really good. Um, yeah. So you start, uh, you know, um, dropping some coin, buying some shots, um, getting, uh, you know, talking to some of the the bigger folk who are make or here. Um, a lot of most of these people are are high end merchants. Um, some have noble connections, and there are a couple nobles who do come in here, and you can uh, spot and point them. You can point, uh, spot them out. Now, Alan and August, are you going with her on this endeavor? You with her at that point? Yeah, she 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 uh, she dragged me out of my comfort zone without a doubt. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm along for the ride. It may not be a good one. It may be a little bumpy, but <laughs> we'll see where it goes. I should like throw in, hey, tell them that story of, and like throw, you know, put the spotlight on you and kind of catch you deer in headlights. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yep. That's exactly what I foresee. And like, I <laughs> take the center stage. Oh, shit. No. <laughs> Don't want people to see me. <laughs> um, Alan, and, and you're going as well? Yeah, I might as well go. Okay. Now, do you two have any other goal or agenda other than. Watching out and hanging with uh, Mary. Just hanging out with Mary, supporting her when I can, as I can. Uh, just on the lookout. Okay, on the lookout. All right, so Mary, yeah, you're talking uh, with some uh, with some nobles. Um, go ahead and give me another, but you can choose persuasion, performance. I'll even let you choose insight if you prefer, and do it again. Mm. Uh, get get advantage and give yourself a. Plus one D four. Oh wow, what was that? What is that? That's insight. That's insight. Okay, so Whoa. Big numbers. Yeah, yeah. I'm not upset about that at all. No, no, yeah, not at all. Um, I'd be happy personally. Okay. So you you find out from one of these nobles that you are carousing with, um, buying drinks, hanging out, um, made made a, made a good connection, and um, he he knows the the person you're talking about, um, and uh, let me let me pull him up again. Sophia, get out of here. Umalar, this guy. Him. Uh... So he gives you a couple juicy bits of uh, information. He tells you that, yeah, I know he, he arrived here not too long ago, a couple days ago. Um, uh, he did have a meeting with the king. Um, it was kind of annoying because we were trying to get audience with the king here as well, but we were told to wait for this guy. Um, and then, and, and then to, to top that off and he's, he's trying to not get too disrespectful. He's like, well, and to top that off, we still haven't had our meeting with the King. Like he's been like, hold up and shut up. Um, now this, this Umular guy, he's, uh, he, he's one of those crafty swords. He's always trying to get in the middle of thing. And he works for Queen Valanthe over here in Nilodale. And he says, I think that the Queen, uh, Queen Valanthe and King Orin here um, have some kind of history. Now, it's while you're talking and uh, having this conversation that Alan notices the doors open and you see two gnomes walk in. They seem to be uh, dressed like royal guards. They're very ornate um, um, some, uh, armor, um, almost, almost ceremonial. And they, they start scanning the room. And they spot first, uh, let's just make a, see who they look at first. Uh-oh. I don't like this. Uh, okay. They seem to, they seem to uh, spot Mary, and they seem to walk, be walking towards her. They don't have weapons drawn or anything, but they're walking towards her kind of urgently. No, oh, wait a minute. No, Mary, you're disguised, right? You're a you're a no. I am disguised. I am a generic no. Okay, scratch that. They they spot and are walking towards August. <laughs> 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 now, 
Now, you spot them first. Do you want to do anything? Do you want to intercede? Again, weapons are not drawn, but they're moving kind of urgently. You know, uh, no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sit here and accept fate and, you know. No, not you. You don't see them yet. I'm talking about Alan. Because Alan, Alan's kind of looking at oh. him, so he's, he spots them first. Sorry. It's okay. I understand. Yeah. Well, if their weapons aren't drawn, then I'm not really going to do anything, no. Okay. So, August, you're you're trying to pay attention to this story. You're trying to pay attention to this noble, but he's kind of giving you a headache because he's talking in circles. He's just like any of these other nobles, oh, like the way voice, they man. talk. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. And then you feel what it feels like, because I imagine you're not wearing your armor, probably wearing nicer, no, I'm not. nice clothes to this event. You feel what yes, uh, feels like a finger poking you in the side. <laughs> I emit the most audible gulp I've ever anyone has ever heard. <laughs> All right, when you when you gulp and and jump and turn around, yeah, you see these uh, two gnomes dressed up in uh, uh, royal guard like garb, and one of them had his finger out and he's poking you. He says, "August, hero of Faroon." <laughs> I look down at him, <laughs> belittlingly. <laughs> yes. We would I like to say hero, but maybe. We would like you to come with us. The king wishes your uh, your counsel. Nice. Are any of your be back. are any of your other friends here? I understand there was a uh, Mary who accompanied you, a halfling uh, who uh, was also part of this uh, heroic party. Is she uh, with? No. Is she with you? <laughs> Not today. Okay. Well, then you can come. Wait, he actually believed that? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Mary, it doesn't, gonna... doesn't take long for you to notice this interaction. You're, you're right there. You do notice it. And you hear them talking. Uh, I'm going to detect <laughs> thoughts real quick. <laughs> on me or the guard? On the guards, I already know what you're thinking. You're thinking <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Atheist. What the hell? Yeah. It's not going to be hard to read what's what's going on in my head. So we'll say so far in your in, in your carousing and socializing endeavors, you haven't had to cast Detect Thoughts yet. So yeah, you, you haven't had to. Okay, so there it is. Okay. You can read the thoughts of, of uh, victims. Oh, not convict creatures. Okay, cast a spell. Action each turn. Spell is. Focus your mind. Blah, blah, blah. Creatures can choose. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, so the surface thoughts of the of this gnome who's talking to August is um, he seems to be um, uh, annoyed that the others aren't here, um, and he, he needs to hurry up and get him to the king. King's the king's in a hurry. I need to hurry up. The, the king told me to hurry up, so I need to hurry up. That's kind of like his th surface thoughts. All right, uh, I telepathy to August. Find an excuse for me to come with you. You know, if you can give me a minute, you know, maybe I can find my friend. I think she's in the bathroom. <clears throat> uh, hur hur she, hurry up. I'll meet you guys outside. Okay, I'll meet you, meet you guys outside. If you don't mind, they kind of like roll their eyes and stomp as they as they turn around and leave and walk, wait, go, go to wait outside. Uh, I kind of go outside, go around the building, drop the disguised self, and come on back. Be like, August, you've been in there forever. Can we find another bar? This one sucks. Yeah, a lot of people in here are very annoying. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the king wants to see us. All right, so you go outside, Alan. Uh, what are you doing? You following? You hanging back? What are you gonna do? Um, I just, I'll just chill out here in the, in this establishment. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, so August and Mary, you're following these guards. They lead you kind of deeper into the mountain, down, you know, around some mountain, you know, past, you know, through some mountain roads, um, and you get to the the royal palace. 
Um, guards, you know, are there as well. Um, gnomes with spears and armor and shields. They look kind of cute. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, You look and, pretty cute, don't you? Yeah. And they also, you know, they all give their, their nods to uh, the guards as uh, you're going through. Now, Mary, have you introduced yourself at this point? Because you did hear yeah, them asking I, for, you know, are you, I, you know, are you August hero of Haroon? Yeah, we're also looking for Mary, the other one of the other heroes. I've made myself known. Okay, all right, so they're good. Okay, so they lead you into a uh, into uh, into a um, a throne room, and in the throne you see. Yeah, where'd you go? Uh oh. Yeah. This guy. He looks old. And uh, there's there's other gnomes in the area, and uh, they introduce you um, to King Orin Knackle, High King of Knackle Hill, and they present you as Mary and August, heroes of Faerun, defeater of giants and dragons. I haven't killed one yet. And he's but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he stands up and he claps. He's like, oh, so welcome to have such great heroes here visiting my kingdom. Please, please come in. And uh, <laughs> and you notice like, you know, some some magic shimmers. And then like the table gets like a, a feast is, is presented on the table. Um, all kinds of food, all kinds of, uh, of drink. And uh, he's like, please <laughs> have a seat and enjoy yourselves. I, I wish to hear all about your uh, your grand adventures. Wow. Impressive. Um, how do you do that? He kind of just winks. He says, I know a few tricks. Interesting. I immediately sit down and make myself at home. <laughs> yep. Food smells real, smells good, feels and tastes <laughs> I follow real. I Mary like a lost child. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this, this reminds me of the North Pole. There's, It's you know, magic food appearing out of nowhere. Uh, kindly old gnome. I'm I'm right at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got your reindeer <laughs> with you. <laughs> okay, so you make uh, you're you're eating, and uh, are you telling him your story? Are you uh, it, it, um, it, it, oh, yeah. em emphasizing certain things or re or exaggerating wildly? <laughs> And I just sit there when Mary looks at me. I just nod my head up, up, and I just nod my head up and down. He's like, "That's wonderful!" Like after you know, listening to you for twenty to thirty minutes, you know, regale him with your uh, uh, horde of the Dragon Queen adventure and uh, your prior adventures. You know, when you dealing with uh, Shamash and the uh, Dragon Bone Dust and all that. Um, Good times. Yeah. Now. He's he uh, he says well, that, that's amazing. It's 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 such an honor. It's such a blessing to have such such mighty mighty heroes here in my kingdom. I I I, I feel like the gods have looked down on me and just said, yeah, awesome. Now um, <laughs> and I'm just curious. Do you have any other friends with you in the city? Nope, no eh. friends. Mm, not good at that. Okay. That's a shame, because friends of yours would be friends of mine, and they'd be welcome at this table. <laughs> so yeah, you continue to eat a little bit a uh, while longer, and uh, eventually he says, "You know what? I uh, it, uh, it 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 pains me to know that heroes of Faerun are having to slum it." In an, at, at some inn, and I know it's a nice inn, you know, you know, more more wealthy people go there. But honestly, heroes of Faerun should be should be should be uh, lodged up in the royal palace, and I think you should do that. Um, we can we can set you up. We can have you stay here for as long as you're staying, for as long as you need to, of course. But you definitely should not be just out in an inn. You should be here, where you belong. It, wow. Not a. I feel. I feel at home in an inn. <laughs> you know. You know. It isn't that bad. There's people I can relate to. Now, both of you give me an insight. Your Majesty, while oh. we appreciate, while we appreciate your royal, and I laugh at my joke, offer. Um, 
we uh, we specifically took this trip to kind of get a chance to reconnect ourselves with the plight of the average uh, uh, person of our uh, uh, world. You know, we've as as heroes of Faerun, we've sort of grown disconnected, and we really wanted the opportunity to reconnect ourselves with our roots. He just kind of like puts his hands up and he's like, the the nobility knows no bounds. I, I am I am I am amazed. And you're right. It's a it's good for you to try to reconnect. And when you do your reconnecting work, um, you could always come back and rest here. Let me give let me give one insight check. I am so sorry. Yeah, it's all right. And just a normal one, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just you know, normal insight roll. I'm too busy freaking out. Yeah, you're like, this is food real. Should I eat this food? I don't know. <laughs> like, you're not. Yeah, you're not even I, hearing the most of weird. It, hearing the conversation. But Mary, um, you pick up on certain quivers of voice, certain body language and mannerisms. He's afraid of something. Like he he's he's wanting protection, but he doesn't want to just say, hey, I need protection. He's like, yeah, hang out here because you're you're royal heroes and such. You should hang out here. But you can tell that he's afraid of something. And yeah, you, if you don't have any other friends, if you got any friends, they can come too. Uh, I am. Um. Uh. uh August, I'm. I'm speaking in August's uh, uh, mind. Uh, I don't know if this is a good move or a very bad move, but I'm gonna do something that might be dumb. <laughs> you know, we do that a lot. <laughs> I'm going to take on the kind of aspect of Krampus, and I'm going to speak in the king's head in the scariest voice that I can do tele telepathically, and say, what are you afraid of? Oh! Ooh, okay. So what is that, feature or something you're using? Let's see. Let me see how no, this works. No, I'm just kind of, oh. uh, it's not oh. anything, I'm just kind of... Oh, okay. Um... Flavoring. Okay. I'm using telepathy, telepathy, but yeah, if if we're looking for um, no, that's cool. Like I could burn a channel divinity. No, no, that's fine. Um, okay. Give me an uh, give me. This I want deception, but you get advantage. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I think he's putty in my hands. Yeah. Okay. All right. This worked in mysterious ways. So, um, August, <laughs> you you don't you don't yeah. you, you don't hear what's happening with uh, Mary and the king's mind, but you see the king like stand up <laughs> suddenly and just scream, "Everyone, clear Sweet out! Bullets. Clear out! Sweet Get out of bullets. here!" But not you two. And he points to you two. <laughs> And, every, and everyone, like the servants, the people that's in the room, they're like, they don't know what's going on. So they just, they're like, okay, the king told us to get out. So it takes a couple minutes and the king makes their way out and he just sits back in his throne and kind of puts his hand in his head. He's like, oh, man. So, so what, what, you, what, he, what he starts to relay to you is um, he's, he's recently had a visit by this Umalir guy. And um, Umalir reminded him uh, this king, King Oren, that there are certain things he needs to keep his mouth shut about and that there would be certain consequences if he spoke about these certain things. Now, Omelir, remember, is the is a diplomat to this queen, Queen Nilodale. Now, it goes deeper because you got a crit 20, so this is going to go deeper. Um, the thing that he knows and that he is supposed to keep quiet about comes from the, the times when him and this queen were of the same adventuring party and where they had cleared out some uh, some frost giants who were who were tormenting the area and where this queen had found an artifact and and uh, she demanded that she would get the artifact and she didn't care about anyone else getting the tre any other treasure she said you can have all the other treasure you want this is mine and she was very like adamant she was not giving that up and um, 
and the king was able to, you know, before he was the king of this land, he was this adventurer with this elf, elf uh, woman, and uh, he believes it has something, you know, to deal with, like, controlling giant monsters. Now, also, you, uh, you, get, the, uh, you get the impression from your crit 20 and uh, your talk with the king that, um, that they're uh, soon... Because because of the way the you know the the, the, the conspiracy that's been happening over in Ilnusdale, and with the apparent with this this new warning from this uh, from this ambassador, that uh, the this queen is going to be up to something soon. And this king King Orin, is afraid that the queen will just decide to silence him for what he knows. So that's what you get after maybe about 20, 30 minutes of him just kind of unloading on you. So yeah, I don't know if she's going to try to kill me. I don't know, but I just just hope that you would y'all would want to hang around for a while cuz yeah, that that meeting spooked me and 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 then I heard I heard you know, I heard about what's going over on the Ilnusdale and just I don't know, there's too much shit to deal with. I, I look at August. And look at you just with like a really like, oh, <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> That's a lot. So are you going to, so, now that you know, you're going to, you're going to hang out with me for a while. I, I got really nice places set up for you. You'll be close by. Um, you'll live in total comfort. Want for nothing. Your, your Majesty, um, the challenge with that is that you will always live in fear of the Queen doing whatever it is you fear that she's going to do. Just kill her. Uh, Sorry I feel like we pocket. need to perhaps go a little deeper and maybe cut off the head of the Queen Snake. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I said. You just have a lot more yeah, tact. Let's use, okay. Let's use diplomacy. Oh, uh, all right. Don't rub it in my face. It is useful for something, see? No, I'm not, dis I'm not discrediting you. I mean, well, that's... I can't the, like you can, so... I mean, that, that could be an option, but uh, Queen Valanthia has grown quite powerful and has built a... a powerful kingdom uh, around her I don't think this is going to be just as easy as walking in and, and cutting her head off oh I certainly don't think so but also you are a, a king yeah um, and we can certainly uh, hmm how do you feel about a trip east I'm, I'm not going to make a trip east well, I'm just thinking that if you got together with our buddy over, uh, no, west. Sorry, I'm not good at directions. Oh. <laughs> yeah, another my King Siren? Yeah, if you two hung out together, you two could back each other up and protect each other. You just make a diplomatic pilgrimage over to say, what up to your brother king? Oops, son. But and then, is, is he going to be king for long? I, I hear there's all kinds of stuff going against him. Uh, we we solved most of those problems. Oh, <laughs> heroes indeed. <laughs> those growing pains of a new king is all. That's that that could be arranged. I could I could I could uh, I could do that. Um, it wouldn't take long to get there and, and be moving away from the queen's territory, so for, for away from her influence and uh, and yeah, and, and meet up with him and you know, say, hey, you know, this queen is starting to starting to act up. That's a good idea. See, I'm so glad I brought you here. I knew that was a good idea. King, you are You're a good idea. I didn't, that didn't sound right. I'm sorry. Try, try August. Repeat after me. King, you are wise. You're wise. King. Yes. Thank you, Mary. I'm so proud of you. 
Well, you know, do me, I try. Do me, do me this favor at least. However long you're going to stay here in my kingdom, at least stay with me. I won't hold you to uh, any, any, uh, anything. And when you're ready to leave, you can leave. Um, now, you know, kind of, you know, kind of going off what you you said, it got me, got me thinking. And um, if you ever needed a place to kind of, uh, um, you know, kind of recharge and regenerate, have you ever visited Unga Forge down down on the southern end of the mountains? No, no, but not yet. freezing up here in South sounds nice. Yeah, there's this, there's not this, really there's this beautiful underground warm spring that the queen kind of, uh, the queen kind of maintains. Um, and she lets people go in and you know ben and benefit from the regenerative properties. It's supposed to sit on some kind of magical source, you know, some font of magic that kind of spews up from this um, warm spring. Um, so that'd be that'd be Weird. a good place. Now this queen, she. Uh, um, I don't. I don't think she has particular history, Queen Unga. I don't think she has particular history with Queen uh, Valanthi, but she's very wise. She's a you know an old dwarf woman, very you know a very wise woman. So that's just a thought too. Yeah, that sounds pleasant as hell. That sounds good. So how long? But are uh, you I don't feel like we're gonna get any time to rest. How uh, how how long are you gonna stay? You know, we told your guard a week, but I'm sure you can give in a good recommendation to make that flexible. But we have other matters outside of the kingdom that we need to attend to. Uh, over back to the west. You know, we're here on business. We're not here for fun. So our times our time is rigid, but I'm sure we can make it flexible, and still complete our tasks one way or another. Is Umalar still in your city? Uh, no, he he has left. Fuck. He he stopped to deliver his warning, and then he's making his way back to Nilodale. Then our reason for being here is done. Yeah, how's well, that? Well, you don't have to leave right now, right? You can, you know. No, no, you, you no. Got, you got you got to rest. You got to rest. We can stay as long as it takes you to pack up your your imperial or or kingly retinue, and begin your voyage. Ah, excellent. Okay. So, yeah. So, you'll be my escort. Not what I said, Your Majesty. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Where are y'all going? We're going south, as you recommended. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that works, too. <sighs> are you going south? No, I was I was going to follow Mary's advice and go west and talk to King Siren and try to build an alliance against Nilodale. Okay, that's what I was thinking you were going to do. Just making sure. Yeah, use use the excuse of, oh, hey, you just got crowned. We're coming over to celebrate. You're paying for all the booze. I didn't just get crowned. I've been, I've been king for a while. No, about the other guy. you're using the excuse the other guy has just been crowned. Oh, oh that's that's good. You should be in my court to help me with these things. Your mirror's really good. I am called okay. to a higher power. Booze. Santa. Santa and booze. All right. Well, I'll start gathering stuff up. I'll start preparing, and uh, gather you know gather uh, traveling supplies. I'll gather I'll gather a, a traveling escort, and then uh, and then when I'm ready to leave, that's when you're gonna leave, right? Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Well then, you know, hang out, do what you want. I'm gonna go start doing all that, and he kind of like you know walks you know behind the throne and uh, through a door in the back you know, to some halls to where he uh, chambers. And then some servants kind of like peek around the corner, like looking, is it, is it okay to come in now? <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Okay. Uh, would you like us to show you to uh, your he, rooms? He said you should first show us to the royal wine cellar. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> okay. All right, so you're... He you're very oh. insistent. You, you, you've been working with and dealing with that. Alan, is there anything you're trying to accomplish here at this uh, this high-end establishment you've been hanging out in? Um, not really. I was just kind of getting away of the land, but if uh, all the action is happening elsewhere, then that's fine. Are you going to make your way to that elsewhere? 
Nah, I have no. I didn't follow him. I have no okay. idea where elsewhere is. That, that's true. That's true. Okay. I would just get lost. <laughs> I'll wait for my companions at the end. Yeah, we should grab Ellen. All right, so... Uh, as, as we get to the wine cellar, I say, I'll hang out here, you go grab Alan and tell him what's going on. No, 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 no. You're not going to sit here on your ass and drink all the wine you want. <laughs> Listen here, how about a right fair game of rock, paper, scissors, or a coin flip or something, okay? How does that sound? Pretty good. <laughs> your plan was pretty good, but I bought us into here... I paid ten gold, okay. I don't want your gun. I don't want your money. No, I feel like rock paper scissors would be fun. I don't know how to play rock paper scissors on this. <laughs> let's just, let's just roll it. Just roll a d twenty, and let's just let's just uh, contest a d twenty. Whoever gets the higher one gets just gets it. Wins. Can I cast less on myself? <laughs> For rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> hey, can I use that lucky feet you got? <laughs> wow, you guys are really terrible at rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah, I guess we are. Uh, but you keep, no, you keep yeah. tying. Mary one. You, you keep yeah, going no. one, two, three, and tie. One, two, three, tie. You keep tying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so eventually, yeah, Mary uh, wins out, and uh, so August, you're gonna you're going to go and fetch Alan. <sighs> I'll go get Alan. Don't drink all the wine, please. Yes, I go get Alan. No all right, you better start making promises. Well, Alan, it's uh, yeah. maybe a couple hours later um, that August you know, makes his way back into that inn. And there he is. Nice. Alan. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> we talked to the king, and we're chummy, and you should really come to the castle before Mary drinks all the wine. Okay. Because either yeah. we're going to have nothing to drink, and her liver dies, or we can actually have a good time and enjoy ourselves, finally. Alright, I'll go to the castle. Sounds good. I cast a liver restoration. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, no, sorry, Mary, no. You're going. You're, you have liver cirrhosis because you, you all of your drinking. <laughs> I've got a push for this. I got magic. <laughs> okay, so we make our way back to the castle. Alan makes his way there. Um, sees Mary in the basement and sees Prancer with his head in a barrel of uh, wine. Um, and, uh, yeah, they greet you, kind of, uh, stumbly. Where's the good stuff, Mary? I want a taste of the high life, just for this moment, please. I swear, if you drink it all. <laughs> I saved you half a bottle. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm so happy, I'm content with a half a bottle. You read my mind. All right, so before we continue, let's uh, let's take a quick break, maybe like five minutes or so. Um, I'm going to uh, pause the recording right now. All right, back live, back from our break. Cool. All right, so you're uh, hanging out with the king. Um, Alan is now here with y'all, and um, he's getting ready for this uh, this journey, um, getting people together, um, supplies together, uh, guards and wagons and such, because uh, it's a royal entourage. It's kind of a big deal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one second here. Sorry, I had to clear that fog out. Okay, and so you're hanging out um, with him in his royal suite uh, during this time. So time passes, lots of work going on. Anything specific you're doing during this? Just hanging out, enjoying the uh, the food and drink? A lot of drinking. Lots of For drink. that one night. For the one night, got it. Uh, I'm just hanging out. I don't really drink. I'm a loser. <laughs> Mary and Prancer are, are enjoying too the 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 libations. Thoroughly, one might even say aggressively. <laughs> aggressively, it's not good. It's not good. Okay, 
So um, let's see if you make it back to your rooms. Give me a, both of you give me a, a con save. I think this isn't terrible or anything. I just want to see where you, uh, if you make it to your room or pass out somewhere beforehand. <laughs> we immediately die. <laughs> Saving throw, constitution, normal. Okay, hey, okay that's, that's, good. That, that's that is good. Mama didn't raise no bitch. All right, so we got honestly better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Nice. So the night passes. You, um, um, Alan, um, well, never mind. The king wouldn't know about your librarian uh, tendencies. Um, <clears throat> so you, um, August, you know, you, you all pass the night, and August, you're making your way back to your to your suite, and each of you got your own royal, royal suite, which is really nice. Um, you're making your way to yours. Uh, you not you don't really even stumble that much. Your head is swimming a little. Um, it, it's starting to hurt some, but you're walking straight. You know, you're not you're not um, obviously drunk. You make it back to your room, close the door, and you just kind of fall face first onto your bed, and it's the nicest bed you've ever slept in. This is a royal quality style bed. God, I hate how rich people talk sometimes, but oh my god, this is amazing. I wish I was rich. <laughs> All right, Mary, so you start making your way back with Prancer. Uh, give me a con save for him, too. Come on, Prancer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's actually got a better constitution than I do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, um, kind of same for him. He, he's walking normal. You see maybe a hoof sl slips every every now and then. He's not stumbling too much. You, however, are kind of having to hold on to him. And as you're holding on to him, it's kind of making him stumble more. And um, <laughs> you, know, you see a couple of people in the hall, a couple of gnomes in the hall. They're kind of pointing, laughing at you. And uh, but you eventually make your way. You and Prancer make your way back to your royal suite. We're not bothered. It's not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> so you two are passed out. Alan, you've kind of heard the commotion. You kind of look out the window and you see Mary and P Prancer kind of stumbling to their room. You just kind of shrug your shoulders, um, and. You can tell that obviously her and August have obviously just passed out. Anything you want to do, or are you going to go ahead and uh, go to sleep? I'll just go to sleep. Okay. So you lay down, and again, this is... Um, well, actually, let me take that back um, a little bit, because you slept in, in King Siren's castle, so he's got really comfortable quarters. So it's a, it's equal to that, you know, royal quality, uh, you know, feather beds, down stuff. Yeah, good good stuff. Okay. Does Alan have strong opinions on feather beds? Oh. Good, question. <laughs> Good question. How many of my ancestors uh, did you kill to make this bed? <laughs> no, because it's not all feathers usually. Yeah, probably not. Fucking so on. I hope they make those uh, pillows out of. Usually goose, I think. That's it, goose. Okay, so the night passes by. <clears throat> um, Mary and August are thoroughly passed out on their bed. Um, and so it's you, Alan, who wake up startled because you hear a loud noise. Kind of sounds like an alarm. And I'll give you a free passive arcane roll. Yeah, that's that's what you're hearing. Someone's cast an alarm spell, and that just got triggered. Um, Mary and August, give me perception rolls, but make them at disadvantage, please. Yeah, 19. So about those lucky points. 19. You're, you're sir, yeah. Someone just triggered an alarm spell somewhere in this suite of rooms. All right, Mary's at All right. 7. She's not hearing anything just yet. <clears throat> can I use a, a, a lucky thing to bring it to normal? You can, yeah. 
Very nice. You know what? <laughs> hey, oh, wait, I rolled persuasion. Oh. Uh, I oh. rolled better than you. Um, yeah, roll pers rolled persuasion. perception. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> I still rolled better than you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, still yeah. rolled better than you. Oh, yeah. Okay, so y'all aren't hearing anything just yet. I'll give you another roll here in a second. But Alan, you hear, you get up, you get to do something. What do you want to do? Um, oh, I guess. I guess I will investigate the noise. Okay. Now, um, Prancer, yeah, let's let's look at that. Prancer does wake up. Now, Prancer's not going to do anything until you get up, so it's going to spend its next turn to try to wake you up, so your next roll won't be at disadvantage, because Prancer's going to be there headbutting you, trying to get you up. Okay, so you're going to investigate the, the noise, Alan. Go ahead and give me a, uh, uh, a perception roll. Nineteen. Nineteen. Well, damn. Nice. Yeah, that is nice. Okay, let me check something here. Okay. It's going to make a quick roll here. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, wrong button. All right. Let's see what up. Let's see what this happens here. Okay. So. Um, as you're investigating, the sound sounds like it's coming from the the king's chambers. And as you're making uh -oh. your way down that hall, you see running away from that um, and around around a corner, some small, dark, cloaked figure running away, trying to get away from that area. So you see that. I'm going to let you react to it here in a second. August, go ahead and give me another roll. You're still at disadvantage. Give me Give me perception. All right. I'll just roll it. Disadvantage. Perception. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Yo, these beds are too good. You kind of criminal. You kind of just you, you don't hear anything. It's like you think it's a dream. You roll over. You throw up. You, mm -hmm. you know you just kind of roll back. Oh, I wish this headache would stop. Um, Mary, uh, go I ahead. Keep my <laughs> Mary, give me a perception roll. You're no longer at disadvantage. It's just a bad dream. There we go. Yeah, you feel yourself being nudged, and you hear something in the background. It's like, ming, 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 something like kind of pressing into your head because you, you, know, you might be a little hungover. But, yeah, Prancer does wake you up and looks alerted, and uh, you, you hear that noise. What do you want to do? Um, if you uh, want... I'm going to send mm -hmm. Prancer ahead. Because he can fly at 60 feet, so okay. he can go a lot faster than I can. Uh, so he's going to dash ahead and try and figure out what the noise is. All right, he's going to dash ahead of you, try to figure out what the noise is. Okay. So, now I'm I don't... I'm going to run behind. Okay. Now, I don't have a, um, a scaled encounter map for this, so, so I guess I may, should have made one. So we're going to kind of use relative distance here. So I'm going to set Alan just kind of right here. We're all kind of underground in these mountains. And Alan's in the hall by near the king's chamber, and he's spotted a figure running away. And that's when Alan, you also see Prancer come out of uh, come out of Mary's room to come see also what's going on. So with you and Prancer there, how do you want to react to what you saw? Uh, I'll chase after it. You're gonna chase after him. Okay. So what's your what's your movement? Like how if you if you halt if you hightailed it, how fast can you go? Um, I can go, if I dash, I can go a hundred, a hundred feet. Whoa. So dashing, you can go a hundred feet. And Mary, how fast can, um, Prancer go if he just goes all out? 120. Okay. He, he can go 120. Okay. So, with you two, 
um, you're you're dashing, uh, running down the hall. You haven't had a dash yet. We're just you're just running down the hall, um, and you look like you're about to overtake this figure, um, and then it's going to turn while it's still a good uh, let's say 30 feet away. So let me kind of slide you over, and we're going to put. And when it turns, what you see is the hood falls back, and you see it looks like this. So we're gonna, oh, creepy. Yeah, so we're going to put it here. Alright, so just for now, I'm going to start a combat with you three, Prancer, um, Alan, and this would-be assassin. So Alan, go ahead and roll initiative, and... Um, Roll for uh, roll for roll for uh, prancer there, uh, Mary. I don't know under features. I uh, just make a dex check for it. Uh, actually, I'll I'll do it in the in the combat in the thing. I already got it here, so I can just I'll just roll for it. Okay, roll initiative normal for. Oh wow. Oh wow! <laughs> Prince is bad. <laughs> Prince is badass. All right, and Alan, go ahead and roll. Uh, I oh yeah, I forgot. I have to do it through this thing. I got a seventeen, but I'll do it this way. Oh, I wonder, can I edit it like that? Can I just update? Oh yeah, I can. Initiative value seventeen. Update combatant. There you are. Okay. All right, so. So, for this first initial this um, first uh, round, Prancer is going to get to go first. So, assuming you can you control Prancer, you can't really see him right now. But what would he want to do in this situation? Uh, I think he's going to try and can can he try and to trip the would be assassin? He can. He can make a um, athletics roll versus. This guy is either athletics or um, acrobatics, and if Prancer wins, it knocks him prone. Okay, so we got a six. So Prancer's Prancer's running up, and let's do for this guy. What's he gonna roll? Okay. Yep. He's too quick on his feet. Uh, Prancer missed his uh, his trip attack. Anything else Prancer can do? No, I think that's pretty much it for Prance. All right, Alan. What do you want to do? All right. Uh, can I just rage, and then that's my bonus action, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'm just gonna go up to the guy, and I'm going to uh, make a grapple check okay all right so i'm just going to move you up here um and go ahead make your roll your athletics roll uh 24 to grapple him 24 to grapple him okay did you get twin 19s that's badass thank you all right you got him he's grappled now, um, <clears throat> so Mary, you hear some commotion, you hear um, Prancer running around, m making whatever noises he makes um, when he's fighting. Um, you want to you peer out the room and see what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, they're further down the hill, so I'm just going to kind of move you here to represent like you're down this hallway. I'm just going to slide you right here, and you see this um, action happening. So you can take an action. We'll say your movement was spent to get here, but now you can take an action. And we're going to come to you in a second, August. You got it. Um, can I uh, hold my action? Uh, and if he um, gets free from Alan, I will uh, cast... Is he, he came out of the king's room. 
in the king's rooms area. What? It seems like he triggered the alarm and, and decided to run instead okay. of, yeah. And nobody else has heard this commotion? Um, no one else has appeared yet. Okay. Can I head towards the king's room? You can, yes. That's further away from where they are, but yeah, you can. All right. I'm going to tell Prancer to hang out and help help back up Alan. And I'm going to try and get to the king's room and make sure the king is okay. Okay. All right. So let me, let me check something here. This guy's going to get to go next. And I want to look at something real quick. So our friend here, um, Alan, that you have grappled, you see him disappear from your grasp. And he appears a little ways over down the hall. And then he's going to target you. And throw a dart at you. That hits. That hits? Okay. Oh, I, I targeted myself funny. <laughs> okay, oops. All right, so uh, you'll take eight damage from the dart, and then I need you to give me a constitution save. Seventeen. Okay, that pass. And so he's going to... Take a second action and throw another one at you. I think I got you selected now as my target. Dirt and attack. That misses. That misses. Okay. So those are those. Those are his two actions. Let me just take one one more check here on something. Okay. Now, August, in your room, go ahead and give me another perception roll, but you're no longer at disadvantage. Just a normal. Alrighty. Let's see how good these beds are. Perception roll. Uh -huh. Okay. You hear so you, you Wait, the, the it sounds like the uh, annoying head hurting alarm has died down a little bit. But you do hear commotion, you hear scuffle, you hear fighting, you hear grunting, and, and, and you hear fighting. <clears throat> oh, shit. <laughs> um, so, I imagine you grab your, your, your sword as quickly as you can and you make your way out, or are you doing something else? Oh, yeah, I grab my sword. Okay. So, we're going to kind of say the same situation here. So, as you're running down the hall, you pass... Oh, I got, a, I got the wrong thing selected. You pass Mary, who... Who um who seems to be uh, approaching the uh, the king's uh, room, and you notice that the king's door has been opened and it's pressed is pushed open a little. Um, so Mary here at this room now, you see August running up, stumbling up with his sword. Um, what do you what do you what do you two are gonna do here? Uh, I'm gonna try and poke my head in the in the king's bedroom and make sure that he's okay. Okay. Can you uh, secure the king? What's that? Mary? Mary, can yes, you secure, secure the king? I got All right. you, I'll go, you go help Alan. Here, no. yeah, I'll go help, uh, help out elsewhere. Okay. They trot off to go get the guy. Okay, so we're going to say getting you to here uses up your, your, your uh, movement for that, uh, for, that section, for that section of time. And Mary, you're making your way in. With, uh, with the dash action. Yeah. And, and then Mary, um, give me a quick perception or investigation, whichever you prefer. Damn. 
Okay. So it's going to take you a moment to figure this out, but you are about to figure out something. Okay, so coming up down the up, down the hall where everyone else is, August, I'm going to add you into the initiative into the fight, and August, go okay. ahead and roll initiative for me. You got it. Uh, here it comes. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Okay. So. Um, Finally, some good fucking initiative. Yeah. All right, Mary, your uh, prancer gets to go first. What is he going to do? Um, let's see. No, that's probably not going to work. Um... I'm going to have him, can he, he can cast spells for me, right? Mm, I'm not sure. Can he? I, I think so. I think that's one of the, the familiar pact thing. Let's see here. Pack magic. Oh, spell casting. Pact of the chain, right? Yeah, pact of the chain. You learn the find familiar spell, cast it as a ritual. Does not count against your number of spells. When you cast a spell, you choose one of the forms from familiar. Okay, additionally, when you take the attack action, you can forego one of your attacks to allow your familiar to make one attack with its reaction. Mm. Doesn't say anything about that, but let's take a quick look at find familiar. Oh, it's not a touch. It's not. It's a ranged. Oh, okay. Found it. All right. So it has to be a touch spell. So Prancer can cast. You can cast touch spells through Prancer if he's touching someone. Yes. Okay. Okay. Making sure I understood. All right. So what's he gonna do? Uh, I think he's gonna just try and trip the guy again. Okay. Yep, he's going to fly up, try to get in the guy's legs, trip him up some. So go ahead and make the uh, athletics roll. Not any better. Yeah, he's not. He's not too. Uh, he's not too athletic or acrobatic, or whichever you need. In this Very case. fast, not so dexterous. <laughs> All right. So let me make his uh, roll. See what happens. Maybe he gets lucky, and he doesn't. Okay. He did get lucky. All right, August, you're down the hall. You can, it's it's not too far uh, that far, so you could pa uh, pass Owlin and get up there uh, with your move action. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. All right, so you're running up, passing Owlin. Boom, 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 boom. And then, uh, I'm in melee range, right? Yep. Ooh, let's see. Do I have? I have daggers. I can use my bonus action uh, and throw a dagger. Uh, yeah, I added them to my my weapons thing, so I can actually I have them in the VTT. Like you're gonna throw it on your way as you're running up, and then and then with a bonus action, and then main action is gonna be your sword attack. Well, the I had to use my action to move here, correct? No, no, that's the move. Yeah, you still have your action. I actually da oh, I still have my action. Okay, yeah. I thought I had a dash here. No, no, no. No, just your move. Oh, sweet. I can just use right my... <laughs> I swing the sword, yes? Yeah, okay, yeah. So target the guy, swing the sword. Oh, I forgot we had the target thing. There we go. Very nice. Alright. Let's see. You miss him. Here comes the second attack. Come here, you little shit. <laughs> All right, well, that hits him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. All right. And let's get that damage. Big numbers, big numbers. Wow, 12. Okay, so... How's that looking? How's he looking? Let me see. Let me click on... Let me select him and apply damage. Uh, what's it say here? Um... It, it, it hurts, but he's still good. 
still good. Okay. Um, I'm imagining I can't do the, um, let's see, I still have my bonus action, and I was wondering if I could do this. Uh, I don't know if it says the actual description there, bonus action. It's pretty hard to make a ranged attack, but I can't do ranged attacks at this range, correct? Yeah, you'd be a disadvantage. Okay, that's what I want to know. All right, I'm not going to do it then. But I just needed a clarification on that. Okay. Then you got anything else? Okay. Uh, you know, I got an accent surge. So uh, I. <laughs> that you do. The cycle continues. <laughs> <laughs> the cycle. The cycle continues. I want your skin. All right, that's uh, that's a hit. Smack. Let's see. I'm going to do a trip attack on him. He has to do a. Uh, let me check. Trip attack. Uh, saving throw a DC 14 of strength. Or he falls prone. And let me roll yeah. damage. Yeah, roll the damage. Plus that D8. Yep. Oh, wow. 13. Okay. So I select them. Apply damage. Okay, now he's not looking so certain of things. And uh, he's got to make a strength save. 14, right? Correct. Okay. Strength save. Oh my god. Alright, he made it. Yeah, you, you slashed him, it hurt him, but he stays on his feet. Okay, well, <laughs> there's another one coming. What, another attack? Uh, yeah, I get two attacks. Then I used Action Surge, then I get the two attacks once more. Well, you get the two. Correct. With the action surge, you get two attacks. Let me let me just double check. You, you might be right. I just want to verify. You make no. You make one additional attack. Oh, wait a minute. One additional okay. attack action on your turn. And I get two attack actions. Oh, no, Alan. You want to understand? You want to chime in here? You're good with rules. Yes, please. I, I don't want to be bending them. So action surge uh, gives you back your action, right? You can take one additional it's uh, one additional action. Okay, so yeah, so if you make an and attack, then you yeah, can... and he has multi attack. So yeah. per attack action, he makes two attacks. So okay. he gets two attacks. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead, make your second attack. Sweet, and I did that. I hit, and here we go. And uh, I'll just do normal normal damage. No no fancy sword play. Ten damage. Actually, do I have fancy sword play? I forgot what I added. Yeah, you wouldn't last another round of that beating from uh, from August. Um, you got are you got anything else, August? Nope, that's it. That's right. me. Alan, you're up. All Hit right. Me. So then, what I'm gonna do is, uh, how far away is he from me? You can reach him with your move action. With okay. Your, with your move, I mean. Right, I figured what you yeah. meant. Okay, so I'm just going to move up to him. Then I'm going to uh, try to punch him with my uh, attack here. Does a 19 hit? A uh, 19 does it. Okay, and because of that, I can do a bonus action grapple. Uh, so. Skills. Where are skills? You see them in your heads up display? Under, um, there, okay, good. So he has to 19 to grapple him. 19. All right, here's his roll. You got him. All right, so he's grappled, and he takes 
Five, six, seven damage. And then I'm going to make, because I have multi-attack, I'm going to hit him again with a, uh, with, try to hit him with my Sword of Life Stealing. All right, and you got him grappled. And so he's you're grappled, advantage. so he can yep. advantage. 21? That's a hit. Totally forgot you can grapple people. And he's going to take 12 damage, because I'm raging, so he takes the extra two. Okay. Um, he's 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 fading. He doesn't have much left, but he's he's still conscious. All right, and that's my turn. Okay. Now it's his turn. And let me just double check something. How many times can he do this? Doesn't say there are any. Yeah. Okay, so what he does, I'll just kind of put this in the chat so we kind of see what happens. He's gonna. This is what he did earlier. And he disappears. Yeah, he's mist. He's like misty stepping or something. Yep. Bloop. He's getting um, blipping out of your arms into another shadow. And then you see him, well, you don't see him, but what he's going to do is he's going to, uh, where'd it go? Here it is. He's going to drop two key points to do this. And then, let me just adjust that. This rat. Yes, he's, he is in escape mode. So he's dro he's dropped Pass Without Trace. He's trying to get away. So with Pass Without Trace, let me just double check something on that. A well of shadows and silence radiates around him, masking him from detection for the duration each creature he chooses, which is going to be all of you. Oh, no, not all of you. Uh, he gets a plus 10 to his One, dexterity checks. Right. He can be tracked and can't be tracked by magical means. Okay. So here, here's how here's how this we're going to go. Because he's trying to make an escape, and he's got Pass Without Trace on, so he gets a bonus to his dex. Now, we're going we're gonna to make three tests to see if you can d detect him and do something before he can get out of this area. Um, so I'm going to start with the first test. I'm going to make a stealth roll for him, and he gets a plus 10 on this. Oh, goddamn! Now, now you y'all can decide to you know if, if you got magical means. If you uh, well, he can't be he can't be tracked through magical means, um, but you still might be able to pinpoint him magically. So let me make this first stealth roll. Okay, so we're looking at a twenty-six uh, for the first test. Now, is there anything y'all want to do to? Oh, um. Let's pause that for a second. Mary, um, what you have found, and I'm going to explain this to you now, um, you got into the king's chambers, and you have, uh, with your high roll of uh, investigation, you have discovered that the king has a like a, like a, 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 an escape plan. Um, it looks like there's a hole in a door that's even smaller than a gnome that he's casted um, reduce on himself to get through. And it looks like there's a little tunnel leading through that door, like a little escape tunnel that he probably has gone through. Now, this tunnel is too small for you to get through because he, he reduced himself to get in. Unless I cast reduce on myself. Unless you cast reduce on yourself. Yep. <laughs> is that what you're, you're going to do? Because that's, that's where he went when all, it seems like when the alarm spotted, he went down the hole. Uh, I'm within telepathic range of Prancer. I'm going to ask... Prant I'm going to tell Prancer to, um, see, do, do I think that, uh, that, that my friends need me? Um, Prancer thinks, uh, well, this, this, we, we're having a hard time finding this guy. We almost, we, we've almost defeated him, but he's, he's on the escape path. It's hard to find him and he's going to get out of here at any moment. So we might need your help to try to find this guy. 
All right. I'm going to let the king go for a minute and then come back to my friends. Okay. So you return with your friends, and we're still on our first test where our hopeful escapee has a 26 stealth. So for the first test, what do you all want to do? How flammable is this place? It's an underground stone-ish uh, building. I mean, is he like on a carpet? Who knows? What's, what's the floor like? Sure, yeah. There are carpets. This is a nice area. There are very nice, very expensive carpets on the floor. Um, <laughs> fairy fire in the radius that he was last seen? Fairy fire in the radius he was last seen. You can. But first, I want a perception roll so you can determine where you're going to throw it. Okay. So, because that was not a 26, I'm going to give him a, de a, a dexterity, a, an advantage on his dex save. So, <laughs> get ready to silver I'm barbs that. You know, I've got a silvery barbs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no fun for the DM. We control this now. Oh, no, this is fun. <laughs> no. All right. He's got a plus 10. He's probably still oh, going to... Yeah, that's I did. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, so you're going to silvery barbs that? <laughs> you bet your ass I am. <laughs> okay. All right, let me roll uh, again. Dexterity. Um, does he get advantage again? No. Uh, I don't think no. so. No? Okay. But, I mean, you're the DM. I don't know. Okay, he has successfully avoided your fairy fire. You cast it out where you think he might be, but nothing took. Um, Alan and uh, August, what are you going to do to try to, to get him, to spot him? You got this. You got this, Alan. Because uh... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get him and half the room, half the hallway, and anything expensive in there. Can Prancer participate in the... Uh, uh... I guess I'm just gonna try to search for him with um, perception, maybe. Okay. Now, b before you roll that, um, give me one second. I'm sorry. What, what would a prancer want to do? Prancer would want to look for him. Okay. So prancer can make a uh, perception roll. Okay. Yeah. Got to get to a 26 for this for this phase. All right. And then uh, anything else he can do? Nah. Alright, Alan, go ahead. Hey, Mary, do you have guidance? Yeah, Mary has guidance. Why don't you just guidance and assist me so I can get advantage and try to get a good number can, here. Can I do What's your that? bonus to your perception? Plus six. Plus six? Ooh. So if I get guidance, it's possible. I just have to roll high. You can you can do the guidance, but you've already had your action, so you can't do help. But you can do guidance. Yeah, I can yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll give him guidance. So I can either set this thing ablaze or assist you, assist you, Alan. Yes, you have not done something, so you can provide the help action. Uh, you yeah. might as well just set this place on fire. Why not? Well, I I'll let think you go Alan first. Has the best chance of finding this guy, and we have three I mean, rounds. My flames are indiscriminate. I got a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Well, you're not finding anything in this in this phase of the test. Um, August, what are you gonna do? All right, <laughs> let me check if I have those big fuck off bombs, the big fire bomb things. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Inventory, other. <laughs> I do have an improved fire bomb. <laughs> so, uh, so we're in a hallway, correct? Um, a a, a set of hallways, yeah. Um, that that set of that lead from like the main door to this area of the suite area to all the other doors of the the rooms and chambers. Okay. So where I saw him vanish, I'm just going to throw, you know, <laughs> 10 or so feet from there, 10 to 20 feet from there, okay. away from us. Um, I'd like to try to find this fucking okay. thing. Cause Give me a perception roll first. Shit. Okay. I'm not looking. Uh, so, I'd like to clarify, I'm not looking for him. I, I know. I'm, I'm just, just guessing. Yeah, this is to determine where you're going to throw it. To see if you're going to throw okay. it close to him or not. Uh, I'm going to burn a lucky point to get 
Uh, advantage. Oh. Hey. Okay. <laughs> he shall burn. <laughs> I'm actually. You should add guidance on that so it can get up to a 26. I mean, it, 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 that could. Should I, should I roll that d4? Yeah. yeah, yeah, do it. Let's see. If, if, d4. Uh, if you've been so guidanced. You yeah. have to, yeah. You know, nice, 26, exactly. 26. But why'd kill you roll him, two, kill him now. Why'd you roll two of them? But did I roll two of them? Yeah, I, you did. Did. I did. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay. know. That's, 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 we, that's we okay. One. No, that's okay. We're, we're, we're going to go with a 25 because this wasn't to spot him. This was to determine your aim. And because that was a crit 20, we're going to say that his saving throw is not at advantage. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, I, I don't... God. Um, I'm, not, I'm not good at these. Oh, we determined it as a potion of fire breath. Don't know how significant that is, but that's just... How would I have written down? That's okay. We'll see how this saving throw goes, and we'll make a determination. Okay, po I have it right here. Potion of Fire Breathing, uh, a 4d6 damage, a DC of 13, half damage on save. It's 100 gold of materials I need to make it. Okay, so he passes, That's but what he's, we he's still going to take half damage. And because he did take some damage, I'm going to make a roll for him to see how well he can not like ex you know yell out or something, because he just got burned for... Go ahead and roll your damage. It's, it's okay, gonna, it's gonna it be is half of that. So why why is that this pressed? So forty six. I just roll forty six. Mm -hmm. Forty six. But it says I have a, a D four like ready. Let's see if it rolls it. It doesn't. Okay. So half of fifteen. Half of fifteen. Okay. So here's what happens. Here's what everyone sees. <clears throat> um, August hurls this this up, uh, lights this bottle, and just hurls it right. And you hear it clank, and it sounds like it's glass clanking on bone, like the skull. You see an explosion, <laughs> and you see this guy get knocked back from his hiding spot onto the floor. He seems unconscious, and he's on fire. What do y'all want to do? I mean, we can put him out, right? I pat August on the back. Job well done. I would like to oh. knock him out, or he's, he's already knocked out. I would like to... Um... He's on fire. Well, I'll put out the fire. Yeah. And I'll tie him up. Sounds good. And right. uh, how does that Misty Step shit work? Can we just, like, cut his tongue out? No, no. Uh, <laughs> it's... It's Sorry. a way of the shadow. It's way of the shadow monk. He uh, can teleport to shadows. So if we just light up a room with bright illumination, he pretty fucking screwed. Yeah. Can I oh, okay. carry fire on him while he's unconscious? You can. Yeah. I would just say it's an automatic success, and now he's lit up. Fair. Now he's kind of lighting up. Ain't no shadows where he is now. Hey, that's nice, actually. Okay, let's uh, you know, <laughs> save him before he dies. All right. So you're able to you're able to put out the fire, stabilize him, get him uh, somewhat conscious, and um, yeah, you. Uh, I'm gonna say, give me. You can choose, and anyone can roll. You can choose intimidation, persuasion, um, at advantage. I got this. I got this. <laughs> I'm gonna roll intimidation. And you're at advantage. At advantage. Then I'm gonna roll a D8 for my. Uh my superiority die for commanding presence. Ooh. We do good cop, bad cop. I am bad cop with that mean 18, or 28. I, I am good cop. We do good cop, no cop. <laughs> I'm not a cop. I will I will tongue you. That sounds wrong. I will detongue you. That sounds better. I got a 27. Okay. So what is that, a 21 plus a 7 plus a 4? Um, I, I don't know what that 4 was. Oh. Uh, the 4 was for me. So I got a oh. 27 and you got a 28. Okay. okay. Yeah, I see it. 27 and 20. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You guys, yeah, this guy uh, has no will left. And, yeah, he tells you this uh, this uh, this uppity, snobby elf named Umalair, um 
paid him some money to uh, to take out the king. Um, didn't realize there was a magical alarm, because I should have researched better. Um, didn't realize you guys were going to be here. Um, guess I should have scouted better. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he really, he, she, and this, this is a, this is a she, by the way. She really seems very disappointed in herself, and she kind, of, and she actually expects to die, um, and you know, <laughs> but she's got nothing to hide, so she tells you. Now, what's your allegiance to the person you work for? What ties you to them? Uh, just that he paid me. Oh wow! Okay, that's how much are they paying you? Uh, you see, he assassinated King. Uh, he he gave me um, and go ahead and make some insight rolls if y'all want. <laughs> yes. I am learning how to be insightful, so I will do that. Eric, yeah, you should oh. roll your way into their mind. <laughs> and all these. All these crit twenties on figuring things out. <laughs> um, yeah, he uh, he tells you that uh, he was paid. Uh, he tells you he was paid five hundred gold pieces. But yeah, that's uh, you can tell he's obviously trying to lowball that. Um, after some roughing, roughing him up some, shaking him, and trying and continuing on with the intimidation, um, he he admits that this was a a two thousand gold piece job. The the five hundred he gave me was up front, um, and I was going to get another fifteen hundred when the job was done. Wow, it's impressive. You would have been fat off of that. Wow. I, was like, I think we have an opportunity here. I, I whisper into Willis. <laughs> Not Willa. God, I wish Willa was here. <laughs> Mary Maker's ear. Uh, <laughs> I think you think of what I'm thinking. Look, the king is dead, right? Wink, so wink. We have his problem solved. He can take a slightly more quiet way to go visit his brother king and then mysteriously come back from the dead when all this shit blows over uh we follow this fellow to where he's going to get the, the gold uh and then we get all 2000 gold no. right but what's to incentivize him to stay into that plan like does he have to bring back a trophy like a you know like an ear yeah, of, do you have or to bring a head back a trophy? um yeah yeah I gotta bring, uh, gotta bring back his hand, and um, and the the plan was for him to. Uh, I wasn't gonna journey outside of the city. I was gonna wait here until he returned, which was gonna be in you know, a few weeks. He said. Oh no, we can't wait. That we'll just kill this guy and take his money that he has now. Yeah, sorry. Excuse me, young lady. All right, so you kill her. doing it I'm doing it who's doing it not me I'm trying to be a good person over here <laughs> trying really you know hard. I'm don't imply that I'm bad he's an she's an assassin do, do you want to turn her over to the cops oh yeah by now guards are running in what the hell's going on oh we can cut his hand wait no that's we still it's like six weeks from now yeah I'm, uh, I'm not interested in waiting I'm more no, of an eat the marshmallow now type kid. Uh, wait, what? The fuck kind of analogy is that? Eat a marshmallow now. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know. You know the, the 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 restraint thing that they do for like three year olds that are like they put two marshmallow they put a marshmallow down and say if you don't eat it for five minutes you can have two marshmallows. Oh, I know that in real life. <laughs> uh. <laughs> August doesn't understand that concept. Anyway, let's just turn him over to the popo. Yep, guards are here. Yeah, they'll take her. Uh, now, whatever. after a few minutes, you see the king's head poking around the the corner of his door. Is everything okay? Yeah, they're apprehended. Oh, <laughs> I knew it was I knew it was a good idea to have y'all here. Uh, Don't mind the the nice charred hot spot in your uh, your hall here. Oh, look at that rug. That's ruined. Uh, well, you know, I guess that's yeah. a small price to pay to stay alive. <laughs> you know, I hit them real hard and they exploded. Yeah, well, sometimes that happens, unfortunately. I've made a few things yeah. explode in my time as well. Ooh. Tell me those stories. 
Well, I guess it would be, uh, <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> uh, I guess it would be rude to uh, not reward you for, for this effort. Uh, all right, hold on, hold on. He kind of, he kind of walks back to his, uh, walks back to his uh, room. He comes back and he's fumbling with this bag and he's kind of like pouring out his contents and you see these like gems in his hands. And he's kind of, kind of. You like, have a real bag next to you? Mm -hmm. I thought I heard like coins jingling. Oh no! That, oh, was it this? Was it that? Did you hear that? Yeah, I think. Yeah, oh, it was that, that. That was just a, a a tiny little screwdriver. I was just fiddling with <laughs> and playing with. And, uh, it sounded like coins. <laughs> that's funny, um, but yeah. So he uh, he hand, he hands you these gems. They're each worth about two hundred gold pieces. And still, he says, "All your lodging and your food. You know, you're always welcome here in my kingdom. You you have proven to be true friends, not just to Faerun, but to all of the everyone." And uh, I'm going to be sad to see you go. Wait, we're friends? Uh, he, yeah. He kind of looks oh, wow. like, hope, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. That was easier than I thought. I just killed a person, and I made a friend. <laughs> you, 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 you actually turned him over to the, uh, to the proper authorities. Which honestly okay, let like me dream, that. Mary. <laughs> Okay, so uh, not much time. Pa uh, more time's going to pass. The king's going to get ready. You're right, um, he gets he gets you <laughs> all today. equipped. Um, gets you rations and and food and cold weather stuff. And he's like, "All right, I'm going to make my way west, and you're making your way south. Is that is that right?" I think. Well, that's I understand. Cool. All right. Well, it was it was. I'm, I'm so happy I've had the chance to meet you, and I really, 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 really hope that you come back and visit and hang out, and we can. Uh, we can feast and, and he points to you, Mary. We can feast and be merry. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that one before, Your Majesty. <laughs> See like, how clever I am? <laughs> you are I'll wise start that joke. And, and hysterical. <laughs> All right, so you eventually part ways. You start making your way south, and that's what we'll, uh, we'll call this session. This was uh, this was a good one. I like this. I like that uh, that whole tracking down the uh, the, the, the monk thing. <laughs> you guys can you guys can try to look for him. I'll let my flames do the job. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It worked. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, because he only the, uh, he only had five hit points left when you hit him with that that bomb. So even the half damage took him down. <laughs> that's that's that, what I was hoping for is just to be indiscriminate and just get him no matter what. The theme of this session was if it dumb if it's dumb and it works, it's not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Not done. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm gonna hold you. On that, I'll stop the recording here. So.